Good morning. Welcome to work. Today is Back Safety Awareness Day. We have lots of activities planned to help educate and promote back safety at work. Come on in. I'll show you what we're working on. Preventing back pain starts with a good safety attitude. This means thinking about personal safety before performing each lift. Practicing safe lifting techniques. Using team lifting methods on large or heavy items and using assist devices are all effective methods to keep your back healthy and free from injury. Is it ready? Yep, just finishing up now. Great. We're building awareness about back safety by demonstrating the mechanics of the back and how those mechanics either help us lift safely or work against us and cause us injury. The spine is made up of cylindrical bones called vertebrae. These vertebrae are stacked on top of each other to form a column the spinal column. Between each vertebrae is a disc. These discs are amazing. They have a jelly-like center and act as padding to absorb the impact of lifting, standing, and sitting. Another great thing about discs is they allow lots of space between the vertebrae for nerves to run in and out of the spinal cord. When all goes well, the combination of vertebrae and discs combined with muscles and ligaments form a strong but flexible vertical framework that supports our back. When loads are lifted properly, close to the body, with the strength of the lift coming from the strong muscles of the legs, the back can support a large amount of weight by absorbing it across the large surface area of each disc. Where we get in trouble is when we lift incorrectly or practice poor posture. Every workplace has a few dummies who continue to ignore back safety practices. Let's see how improper lifting and poor posture can affect the back. Improper lifting techniques and poor posture put stress on individual parts of the spine, which can wear out or become damaged. We mentioned earlier that proper lifting includes keeping the load close to the body. Why is that? The closer the load is kept to the body, the more force of the lift is distributed vertically up and down the spine, allowing each disc to absorb some of the load so no one disc is overloaded. Holding the load away from the body, especially with the back bent, causes most of the force to be placed on just a few discs and vertebrae. In addition, those discs are severely pinched between the overloaded vertebrae. This overloading and pinching of the discs causes them to wear out and even rupture. Another reason to keep the load close to the body is leverage. We've all heard about how the back is a lever, but let's see how this idea really works. A lever allows us to lift more weight up compared to the force we apply down. For example, a lever set up like this allows a 10-pound weight to lift 100 pounds. Our back is like a lever and works in a similar way. Unfortunately, it's this principle of leverage that often works against us rather than for us. In our case, we place 100 pounds of force on our back in order to lift 10 pounds. That's right, we're operating from the short end of the lever. And to make matters worse, as we hold the load farther out from the body, bending from the waist rather than squatting, the lever arm gets longer, causing even more force to be applied to the structure of the lower back. This type of bending and lifting puts so much strain and pressure on the discs and vertebrae that eventually something will wear out, break, or snap. Another common lifting error is twisting and turning while lifting. The discs are already under pressure from the basic lift. The act of twisting causes the discs to be ground between the vertebrae. This places great strain on the disc and can also lead hey, to a hey, rupture. Hey. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, do not twist your back. A disc rupture causes many bad and painful things to happen. The vertebrae can begin to rub on each other, bone on bone. The space between the vertebrae goes away and the nerves become painfully pinched between the bones of the vertebrae. The disc may also bulge, placing additional pressure on the nerve. In addition, the weakened disc causes unbalanced loading of the disc and vertebrae above and below the affected area. In short, the whole framework of the back is left in an unstable and painful condition. It's important to remember that many problems that cause back injuries are caused by a gradual degeneration of the discs, rather than one traumatic injury. 
This is an important point to remember, because when you first start lifting incorrectly, you won't feel any pain. You won't know anything is wrong. This dummy has been instructed many times about proper lifting techniques. While this dummy has watched countless back safety videos, just like you're doing right now. However, both dummies quickly learned to disregard the proper techniques because lifting their way seemed easier and caused no immediate harm. However, as these dummies continue to lift and twist as well as bend from the waist while lifting, the various components of their spine are wearing out and becoming damaged. Hey, you need some help? Can you do that by yourself? Do it. Wait a minute, let me get a dolly, okay? You think I can't lift this? I can lift this all by myself. Well, suit yourself then. Don't let pride or stubbornness break down your commitment to personal safety. It's easy to see how improper lifting can lead to a back injury. Don't be afraid to ask for help when lifting awkward or heavy loads. Also remember that hand trucks, pallet jacks, and other assist devices make moving these types of loads easier and safer. What in the world have you done? I don't know what happened. Sit up and let's take a look at this. You've been instructed every year on proper lifting technique. Yet you continue to ignore what we've been trying to teach you. Look, I know you're a dummy, but let's go over the basics one more time. As this dummy is learning safely. now, you can greatly reduce the chance of a back injury if you properly plan each lift. Determine the size and weight of the object to be lifted and decide if you can safely lift the object. Protect yourself against any sharp edges or rough materials by wearing leather or heavy cloth gloves when needed. Examine the path you will follow to your destination and remove any obstacles or tripping hazards. When preparing to lift the load, plant your feet about shoulder width apart and bend your knees. Center your body weight over your feet. Get as close to the load as possible while maintaining your spine's natural curve. Pull in your stomach so you can use the abdominal muscles to help support the back. Rise slowly and allow your legs to do the lifting. When traveling with the load, keep it close to your body and make sure you can see over it. Face the direction of travel and avoid any twisting or bending motion. When setting down the load, reverse the steps used for lifting. Be careful not to smash your fingers under the load when you release it. If an object to be lifted is located above your shoulders, use a step stool or sturdy ladder to reach it. Get as close to the load as possible and slide it towards you. Remember, do all the work with your arms and legs, not your back. Loads that are under racks and cabinets can also cause problems. Pull the load towards you using your arms. Support the load on one knee before lifting. Use your legs to power the lift. Another cause of back pain and injury are strains and sprains. Back strain is a general term used for a pulled or torn muscle. A back sprain refers to stretched or torn ligaments. The same types of poor lifting practices we discussed earlier can lead to these ailments. Other things that can factor into these types of back injuries include poor physical condition and poor posture. Too often a sedentary lifestyle leads to a weakening of the large muscles in the back and abdomen which help support the back. In addition, a lack of exercise leaves muscles and ligaments in the back with limited flexibility making them highly vulnerable to a strain or sprain. To avoid this, consult your physician for specific exercises and stretches to keep your back flexible and strong. Simple stretches done before lifting will warm up your muscles and increase flexibility. Stretches performed after lifting are also helpful by reducing stiffness. All right, I'm really glad to see you. First thing I need you to do this morning is take this whole pile and get it onto these sawhorses. I'm going to go check on the next shipment and I'll be back to help you finish it off. Even a dummy should know that failing to participate in adequate exercise, as well as failing to stretch and warm up before lifting, stretches the limits of a good safety attitude. Ow! 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 Ow!
and can be a painful reminder about safe lifting techniques and back care. What happened to you? I'm not sure. Have you been exercising at home to strengthen your stomach and back muscles? No. And what about diet? Are you following a good diet to avoid becoming overweight and adding additional weight to what you lift? No. This morning, before lifting, did you stretch and warm up your muscles and ligaments so that they would be flexible? No. Well, then you can't be surprised that you strained your back. Are you? No. We've talked a lot about lifting, but there are many ways to wear out your back that don't involve lifting anything. As you'll see, proper posture is critical to the long-term health of your back. The health of your back depends on your ability to maintain a neutral posture. When you assume a neutral posture, your body will find its natural balance and avoid overstressing the components of your back. When sitting, neutral posture includes sitting with your ankles, knees, thighs, and elbows at right angles. When using computers, make sure you don't have to stretch forward to reach the keyboard or to read the monitor. You should keep your head balanced naturally over your shoulders and not protruding in front of your body. Keep your shoulders relaxed. When choosing a chair, make sure the lumbar area of the spine is supported. A simple support cushion placed between your chair and lower back can help maintain the correct posture. When standing, you need to keep your spinal column aligned in its natural S-curve. If you must stand for long periods, propping one foot on a stool reduces stress on your lower back. Shift your posture often and stretch frequently. Don't force your body to conform to the workspace. If you make a habit of using poor posture, you'll be more prone to back pain. Don't forget good posture when you leave work. When driving, use a firm seat or add a padded pillow for low back support. Sit close to the wheel with your knees bent. Drive your car just like you work at a desk. Sit up straight and don't slump forward. Driving is stressful enough as it is. Don't add to it with poor posture. We have discussed three main areas in this program about back safety. Proper lifting techniques that use the structure of the back to help us lift while reducing wear on the various parts that make up the spine. Exercise, stretching, and warming up before lifting to keep the muscles and ligaments strong and flexible. This helps avoid back strains and sprains. Finally, we discussed proper posture when sitting and standing to avoid stress on the back in situations other than lifting. But buried inside this program is a deeper message about safety attitudes. We mentioned earlier in the program that every workplace has a few dummies that continue to lift incorrectly. Well, that's not exactly true because back injuries don't just happen to dummies, they happen to real people, just like you. The dummies in this program already knew the proper way to lift, stretch, warm up, sit and stand to avoid back injury. They just chose not to do it. We may be tempted to excuse their actions because after all, they're just dummies. But what's your excuse? What does it say about you if you choose to ignore these basic back safety practices? Don't be a dummy about back safety. Do everything you can to ensure your back stays strong and healthy. After all, supporting yourself and your loved ones puts a lot of weight on your shoulders. Make sure your back is strong enough to handle the job. Have a good day and a safe day.